Hello, I'm Dr. Wiley Smith. I feel privileged to do a presentation for Christian Community Health Fellowship. I'll be talking about Grace Medical Outreach Ministry. We are a Christian 501c3 organization based in Dalton, Georgia, and we've been around since 2010. Dalton is an industrial town in Northwest Georgia that is known as the carpet capital of the world. Grace Medical Outreach is different than a conventional clinic in that we are based solely on, the, solely on the practice of house calls. We don't operate a fixed clinic at all. I'll be explaining why we decided to go with this model. The origins of our work started overseas. I'm a family physician who trained with the Army and practiced as an Army doctor for 20 years. After I retired from the military, my family and I moved to Belize in Central America, where we lived for nine years with, we lived with nine years and worked with the missionary agency Mission to the World, which is the missionary agency of the Presbyterian Church in America. I worked as the only full-time doctor in a clinic in a small village close to the border with Mexico. From time to time, I was asked to visit an elderly or disabled patient in, my, uh, in their home. One was an elderly woman who lived in a thatched roofed hut who was deaf and blind. She would feel the head of my stethoscope <clears throat> and gained it, and that gave her a big smile because she knew the doctor was there to see her. With these house calls, <clears throat> I had an extended length of time with my patients. <clears throat> I got to know them and their families, not only for their medical needs, but also for their physical and spiritual needs. This proved very fruitful in addressing more than what I could do with just pills. I also got a lot of appreciation from the patients and the families. After our work uh, in Belize was completed, I looked for a place where I could continue to perform house calls. I had friends at a church, Grace Presbyterian, in Dalton, Georgia, and visited there to see if there was room for a faith-based ministry that performed house calls. Talking to church members and the medical community, I found that there was an unreached population of pati patients, that is, patients who were homebound and could not, without an ambulance ride, get to primary care. In particular, home health nursing agencies came in contact with such patients. The home health nurses could not do their job without a primary care physician to collaborate and supervise. Uh, the other things that could help might be palliative care and hospice, but they took care of only patients near the end of life, but many patients don't fall into this category. The home health nursing agencies can only help for a specified time after a hospitalization or what other insurance will allow them to cover. Non-emergency ambulance and wheelchair van rides are expensive and often exhausting for patients and their caregivers. We also found that there were practically no doctors or nurse, practici nurse practitioners in our area who did house calls. House call providers are not common because Medicare and Medicaid don't adequately pay for them and require lots of paperwork to justify them. There are concierge doctors in rich areas that will visit patients who can't afford them, but not in Dalton, Georgia. There is another and perhaps more important reason we should consider house calls. When the Lord Jesus was telling the disciples about the end of time as described um, in the uh, Gospel of Matthew, when all the earth would appear before him in judgment, he described those that were his, the sheep, and those who were not, the goats. The sheep were known for certain activities, one of which was visiting the sick which the Lord said was the equivalent of visiting him. I'd rather be doing sheep things than goat things because the sheep came out much better in the end. What other argument can we make for doing house calls? There have been several studies done on various tactics to reduce hospital readmissions and hospital admissions in general. And the tactic that has stood out has been sending providers into the homes. The prospect of reducing hospital readmissions is particularly attractive to hospitals now that Medicare penalizes hospitals that have a high 30-day readmission rate 
for Medicare patients. We have a mission statement <clears throat> to provide medical, physical, and spiritual care for homebound and indigent patients and their caregivers. None of that we uh, note that we want to address not just the medical, but the physical and the spiritual. We also want to minister to the caregivers of the homebound who are often unpaid and overwhelmed with their duties. Here are some tactics we employ. First, we use free electronic medical records that allow us to access records on the field and our, our workers to work remotely, uh, such as one touch and practice fusion. This really came in handy during the pandemic. Second, we don't charge patients or insurance for our services. There's two reasons for this. Uh, one is that most of our patients are poor and already have a lot of medical debt. Another is that we don't want to be spending our time fighting insurance companies and complying to regulations. Another reason is in Georgia, we have a good Samaritan law that says if you are providing free medical care, you are not subject to uh, malpractice suits. Another tactic is that we look for volunteer providers of which I'm one. Because a lot of our work is non-medical, we can make use of non-medical volunteers, especially from churches. We are also pursuing grants from charitable and Christian sources. We're hoping to get a <clears throat> grant from the Georgia Baptist Healthcare Foundation in the next year or two. Fourth, we don't maintain a physical clinic. Uh, this saves a lot of money. Uh, we have an office at Grace Presbyterian Church, but uh, we don't use it as a clinic. Um, in Dalton, we already have a free clinic and we maintain good relations with them. Another tactic is <clears throat> that we're pursuing is partnerships with a medical residency program and social work schools so that we can use their students to uh, provide for our patients. Here are some statistics of how we've done since 2010. All total, we served around 700 patients. At any given time, we have a census of around 60 patients. Last year, we provided around 350 house call visits. We did this with one main provider, namely me, who does house calls two or three days a week. We have two hired part-time nurses, one of which is our telephone coordinator and a new nurse who is our executive director. She is in charge of fundraising and growing an organization under the guidance of our board of directors. Here are three examples of our patients. Uh, this is Benny. He is an 84 year old man who has lived alone for several years after his wife died. We met him four years ago when we were called by home health nurses to help him. He had suffered a stroke and had undergone open heart surgery, that is a four vessel cabbage. He had no money and was living in a single room in an extended stay motel and literally was existing off of rice and beans because his social security barely covered his rent at the motel. We got him going on his medications, helped him with transportation to the specialist doctors, and found him an apartment in a subsidized senior apartment building. These apartments have a year long waiting list in our area and getting him in one quickly was strictly miraculous. We also found that he is a veteran and got him started with a VA pension that supplemented his income. Spiritually, he is a Christian believer and spends a lot of time reading his Bible. We've had to work to keep his vision up because he has developed glaucoma. Uh, these days, he is starting to develop dementia symptoms and chronic renal insufficiency, so we still have challenges to face with Benny. This is Amy. Amy is a 25-year-old woman who has uh, paraplegic cerebral palsy and has been wheelchair-bound since an early age. The reason she could not get to regular medical care is that she was living in a house without a wheelchair wrap. So we provided care for her until a wheelchair ramp could be built at her house. Uh, we have a partnership with a local charity called Rebuilding Hope, 
that does housing rehab and wheelchair ramps. This is Beulah. Beulah is a 60 year old lady who suffered a series of strokes that left her wheelchair bound. Her caretaker is her husband. They live in a very rundown mobile home, especially um, uh, the problem with the mobile home was that there was no ability to have a handicapped bathroom. So uh, we recruited a couple of visiting summer teams from churches to come and build an addition of a handicapped bathroom for Beulah. Uh, thus, we're, this is sort of another example of how we're working on these, what we call the social determinants of health, those things that keep people uh, from having better health that are not just uh, lack of medication. With the house call model, we have the opportunity of pursuing spiritual care in a manner much better than brief clinic visits. Here are some things that are helpful. We pray with patients and caregivers at each visit. Patients really get used to this and remind me if I forget to pray with them. We give out Bibles, especially large print and audio Bibles. I am also quite fond of the devotionals written by Johnny Erickson Tata, such as A Spectacle of Glory. These are written in the perspective of a disabled person. When we do a spiritual survey with our patients, we find that most, in, uh, most of the time they have attended a church and heard the gospel, but only a few have a deep and saving faith. But being disabled and homebound, they have time to think about their lives and are often hungry for the hope that the gospel brings. Thus, we can promote what I call the medical gospel, which goes like this. I'm a doctor who hands out pills. Other doctors will cut on you or stick things inside of you. Now, we hope that these things will help you feel better and perhaps live longer. However, our medicine is weak. We can't keep you alive forever. However, there is a much better doctor who can keep you alive forever. I want you to put your trust in him. He is Dr. Jesus, the great physician. Here are some ways you can be praying for us, for our patients, medical and physical needs, for our patients to know and grow in Christ, for our volunteers, for the growth of our ministry to serve our community and the advancement of the gospel. Here's our contact information. Please get in touch with me for questions and comments. I'd love to hear from you if you know of similar ministries such as ours or have ideas of how we can improve. Thank you very much.